This is Humphrey Bogart. This is Dorothy McGuire. This is Robert Middlemass. And this is Pedro de Cordoba. Tonight, through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in one of the most famous stories in American theatrical history, The Valiant. It stars Dorothy McGuire as the girl, Humphrey Bogart as the prisoner, Pedro de Cordoba as the chaplain, and Robert Middlemass, who wrote the original play as the warden. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in The Valiant. Penitentiary, the Connecticut State Prison, a bad night, a depressing night, a night set aside for an execution. It's raining outside, a steady, dismal rain that chills the bones and drums its way into the mind, a relentless, implacable sort of rain. Even conversation becomes damp and heavy. Inside in the prison office, a single small lamp is burning on the warden's desk. And here in the half-lit, half-shadowed gloom, two men wait and count the passing minutes. The warden and the prison chaplain, both trying to forget what lies ahead. Still raining, warden. Yeah. It would have to go and rain tonight. It's past eleven. We haven't very much longer to wait. Well, thank God. I'm sorry. I guess I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. Is anyone ever young? No, I suppose not. But a necktie party didn't used to bother me so much. This one's giving me the blue devils. It's not a pleasant duty, even with the worst of them. No. Was he quiet when you left him? Yes, he was perfectly calm. I believe he'll stay that way to the end. Father, when you were with him in his cell, did he talk? Oh, yes. He talked very freely. What about? Almost everything. Himself? Almost everything except himself. That still seems to be the one thing he won't talk about. That's what's got my goat. He's been like that ever since he came in. Four months. Watching tonight come closer and closer. And still refusing to tell us who he really is. I'm afraid he intends to go on that way. Trying to make us believe his name is James Dyke. James Dyke. (laughs) That isn't his name any more than it's mine. He's just trying to shield somebody, that's all. Uh, What time is it, Father? 11.30. Warden, if you want to pour yourself a drink... Well, thanks, Father. I think I will. I don't know why I should hate this one any more than the others. The boy is guilty as the devil. Yes, he killed a man. Willfully, feloniously, and with malice of course. And he pleaded guilty. So he deserves just what he's going to get. That is the law. Still, if he'd only talk. If he'd just open up. I've begged, I've argued, I've threatened, I've coaxed. And I'm not through yet. What do you mean? First time I've done a thing like this in the 28 years I've been warden here. I'm going to try to talk to him again. Here he is, warden. I brought him up. Okay, Dan. You can wait outside. Yes, sir. Come in, Dyke. Sit down. Thanks. Dyke, you've been here under my charge for four months now. And I want to tell you that from first to last, you've behaved yourself like a gentleman. Why should I make any... And you haven't made any trouble. And I've tried to show you what I think about it. I've made you as comfortable as the law would let me. You've been very kind, Warden. You too, Father. I've had you brought in here to stay. From now on, with Father Daly and me. That's fine. Well, this is a very unusual procedure. You don't seem to understand. Sure I do, Warden. But you don't seem to understand. 
doesn't give me much of a thrill. My son, the warden is only trying to do you one more kindness. I know he is, Father, but what's the use? From now on, one place is about the same as another to me. But, my son... Look, I'm just as much a condemned prisoner here as I was in my cell. Armed guards out there in the rain every few feet. Dan planted outside that door and that other door. I know as well as you do where that door leads to. Would you rather wait in your cell? No, no. No, this is a little pleasanter except... Except what, my son? Well, in my cell I could smoke. Oh, uh... Uh, what do you want, cigar or a cigarette? Cigarette, if it's all the same. There's a box on my desk. Help yourself. Thanks. Light? Much obliged. Yeah. You know, Warden, you're a pretty good host. Dyke, before it's too late, I wish you'd think over what Father Daly and I have said to you so many times. I have thought it over. Then, as man to man, and this is your last chance, who are you? Who am I? James Dyke, a murderer. That's not your real name. So what? You're not going to execute a name, you're going to execute a man. What difference does it make if you call me Dyke or something else? It makes a great deal of difference, my son. To a lot of people. You see that pile of letters on my desk? Well, they're just a few samples. All together, I've got 4,000 letters like those. Oh, it's a lot of letters. From every state in the Union, from Canada, from England, all asking the same thing. Who are you? And are you the missing son or brother or husband or sweetheart? You answered them? I couldn't. You're the only one can do that. (laughs) In 20 minutes? Listen, Warden. You can write these people and tell them I'm not the man they're looking for. And that'll be the truth, too. Because I haven't any mother or father or sister or wife or sweetheart. I haven't anyone, see? You're trying to shield somebody, aren't you? Maybe I am and... Maybe I'm not. Who is it? Your family? I didn't say it was. You didn't say it wasn't. Dyke, just listen to me a moment. Now, don't be narrow about this thing. Try to look at it in a big, broad way. You want to spare your family, and I don't blame you. But why don't you figure it from this other angle? Suppose you come out with the truth. You might put all this sorrow into one home, one family, your own. But you'd be bringing a tremendous relief to 4,000 others. Don't you think you owe something to all those other people? Not a thing. But, my boy, you do owe something to all those others. The warden is right. You owe them peace of mind. For the sake of all those distressed souls who imagine God knows what, I beg you to tell us who you are. I guess it's no use, Father. Dyke, is there any other statement you want to make? No. No. I think I've said everything. I killed a man and I'm not sorry for it. I mean, I'm not sorry I killed that particular person. I... Repentance, my son. Sure, Father, I know. I've heard repentance is the sickbed of the soul, but the mind's pretty healthy right now. The man deserved to be killed. He wasn't fit to live. I knew I had to kill him and I did it. I did it deliberately and intentionally and carefully. I knew what I was doing and I've got no excuse. At least, no excuse that'll... Satisfy the law. Now, look, Dyke. That's all there is to that. And an hour from now, if a couple of angel policemen grab my soul and haul it up before God... My boy, please. I'm sorry, Father. I didn't mean to step on anything that's sacred to you. But if I've got to be judged by God Almighty for the crime of murder, I'm not afraid. Because the other fellow will be there too, won't he? When God hears the whole story and both sides of it, which... You never heard. And they never heard in the courtroom either. Well, then, if he's any kind of a god at all, I'm take my chances with the other fellow. That's all. Well, Dyke, if you feel that way... Better grab that, Warden. It might be a reprieve. I don't think. Hello? Yes, this is the Warden. Where? No, no, don't do that. I'll be right down. she, Wilson? In there in the waiting room. I figured she must be pretty important. Governor sent her over in his own car. And she thinks this fellow Dyke is her brother? She doesn't think. She's sure he is. I had the matron frisk her just to be safe. 